It's always difficult to have researchers on your paddocks, um, but they've taken our staff quite enthusiastically, they've participated strongly and, and tested things that they probably wouldn't have done. Um, to actually see some of the legumes coming into the system and under hard conditions uh, actually establishing and persisting actually has been quite exciting. What we were doing was basically not in the improved pasture but in the cropping land I was using for uh, fodder feed and, and all I was ever growing there was oats on a rotational basis with uh, Dolex Lab Lab and every time I used Dolex Lab Lab I inoculated it and through the results today uh, we found a, a marked increase in the um, carbon in the soil so my main concern was to see uh, generally the sandy soils and chinchilla lack carbon and so we've been really successful in what we're doing. We have one more soil test to go. And um, so that really is what my, my aim was, is to increase uh, the carbon content of the soil. Really, I'm seeing the response of the input of the people who are running these different programs, the help that they're giving me, uh, it's giving us positive results. Well, I cut crossing was very interesting and encouraging. We had uh, a dramatic increase in you know, one of the fundamentals there, which is organic carbon in the soil. And as a result of that increase, we had a, a flow on effect, obviously. So we increased the organic carbon by some 40 odd percent in the, in the soil profile, which itself is very encouraging. Uh, but the, the flow on effects as a result of that was, you know, we increased the amount of cation exchange capacity, uh, the active carbon, etc., also increased. So you know, from changing one thing there through uh, forages, forage cropping, etc., we were able to affect many other positive uh, soil health indicators. The results so far have been greater than what I would have expected, given that some of the sites, especially, well, most of them, in fact, are dry land sites. So, you know, the sites haven't had the benefit of irrigation. Uh, the improvements that we've had, um, as I say, have been very encouraging to come from such a low base, which might be the reason why we have had such a big increment to start with. You know, we are working on soils that have been run down for some period of time, so you know, what we are doing is obviously a big injection uh, to them. The level of organic matter in the soil is a very, very good indication of uh, soil fertility, uh, as well as all the other nutrients, the nitrogen, the phosphorus, uh, potassium and so forth. But in particular, uh, organic matter is, is a key element of soil fertility, as is our place. But, um, if What we're trying to do in building soil carbon is actually to increase the um, soil fertility. And uh, that, of course, then has a major impact on, on pasture productivity and lower gains and economic returns. The process we used was pretty much uh, diagnostic soil testing based on areas that we had uh, already outlined from the EM survey work that were affected in some way. So this was a preliminary work that we did and then we based the areas that we soil tested on that work. So I then went into ground truth what we, what we discussed or discovered from the EM survey work. If people want to commit themselves to improving you know, run down pasture or cultivation, it's absolutely possible to do it. Shadow of doubt, and that's um, once you start to see you see those um, benefits and results, that then spurs you along to, to keep going.